Welcome back to another Score Builders question and answer video session. This video provides members of the Score Builders team with the opportunity to explore challenging multiple choice examination questions with students actively preparing for the licensing examination. My name is Scott Giles and I will be your host for today's journey. What's on the dinner menu today, you ask? Our four featured entrees are pathology, 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 and pathology. It reminds me of the choice you had back in 1908 when the Model T was first introduced. Henry Ford proudly proclaimed, you can get it in any color as long as it's black. I'll read the question and provide you with an additional 60 seconds to answer the question. Ready? Let's go. A patient with hip joint pain is referred to physical therapy for direction and strengthening exercises performed in weight-bearing positions. The physician's referral notes that recent bone density testing revealed the patient has osteopenia. Which of the following comorbidities would most likely be part of the patient's medical history? 1. Cushing syndrome. 2. Guillain-Barre syndrome. 3. Spinal stenosis. 4. Complex regional pain syndrome. Obviously, your ability to answer this question is going to depend primarily on your knowledge of osteopenia and the four pathologies. Let's start with osteopenia and progress to each of the options. Osteopenia is a condition presenting with low bone mass that is not severe enough to qualify as osteoporosis. Bone mineral density is used to diagnose osteoporosis and other low bone mass disorders. Individuals with osteopenia may not have actual bone loss, but a naturally lower bone density than established norms. A decrease in bone mass may be caused by prolonged drug therapies of heparin or corticosteroid use, endocrine disorders, malnutrition, and other disease processes. Let's explore each of the options. Option one, Cushing syndrome. Cushing syndrome is a condition resulting from abnormally high levels of cortisol due to endogenous overproduction of cortisol or excessive exogenous use of corticosteroids. Symptoms evolve over years and can include persistent hyperglycemia, growth failure, truncal obesity, purple abdominal striae, moon-shaped face, and weakness. Mental changes can include depression, poor concentration, and memory loss. High levels of cortisol in the body for a prolonged period changes the way in which bones are remodeled, i.e. decreased bone formation, increased bone resorption. These changes ultimately lead to osteopenia or osteoporosis for many of these patients. A bingo! Option two, Guillain-Barre syndrome. Guillain-Barre syndrome is a temporary inflammation and demyelination of the peripheral nerves myelin sheaths, potentially resulting in axonal degeneration. Guillain-Barre syndrome results in motor weakness and a distal to proximal progression, sensory impairment, and possible respiratory paralysis. The effects of Guillain-Barre syndrome are temporary, with most patients experiencing a full recovery and would not lead to a decrease in the patient's bone mass. Option three, spinal stenosis. Spinal stenosis refers to a narrowing of either the vertebral or intervertebral foramina. Symptoms are typically produced as a result of mechanical compression on either the spinal cord or exiting nerve roots and may include pain, paresthesia, weakness, and diminished reflexes. Spinal stenosis is not associated with the diagnosis of osteopenia. Option four, complex regional pain syndrome. Complex regional pain syndrome is characterized by an increase in sympathetic activity 
causing a release of norepinephrine in the periphery and subsequent vasoconstriction of blood vessels, resulting in pain and an increase in sensitivity to peripheral stimulation. Complex regional pain syndrome is not associated with a diagnosis of osteopenia. The correct answer is option one. Let's explore the all student data. 66% of students selected option one, Cushing syndrome, the correct response. 5% of students selected option two, Guillain-Barre syndrome. 23% of students selected option three, spinal stenosis. 6% of students selected option four, complex regional pain syndrome. System classification. This question is an other systems question, which represents approximately 21% of all exam items. Content outline classification. The question is the foundations for evaluation, differential diagnosis, and prognosis question, which represents approximately 33% of all exam items. Level classification. This question is a level two question, since the question requires students to integrate numerous pieces of information or to apply knowledge in a given clinical scenario. Remediation of level two questions occurs by increasing flexibility with academic content and by carefully analyzing decision-making processes when answering applied examination questions. Academic focus area. Looking to review related academic content? Pages 539, 631, and 657. Thanks for joining us on the Scorpola's question and answer video session. See you next week.